All right, welcome to another episode of The Catholic Couple, having fun with faith, family, and friends. I'm your co-host, Bobby Fredrickson. With me, as always, my beautiful wife. Katie Fredrickson. I'm the convert Catholic, and she's the... The cradle Catholic. And here we are on a brand new episode on retreats. Mm -hmm. We just both came off of a, a nice weekend retreat, so we wanted to share some insights, some practical stuff, and a little bit from what we shared, why they're important, and some people from the Bible who including Jesus himself, took time to get away, to decompress, and to be focused on those kinds of things. So let's start with a prayer in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Lord, we ask you to guide this conversation. We ask you to touch somebody that's listening today in a special way. Touch their heart, heal them, restore them, help them to become a disciple of yours. We ask this in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. So yeah, so we got this idea about doing one on retreats because like I said, we both were on a retreat Friday, Saturday, had mass and then came back. So it wasn't too long, but it, it was long enough, I think. What do you think? I left yearning for more. I'd like to now look into some kind of like silent retreat, to be honest. That's so a, yeah. no, I don't because I think that we're unnaturally busy in our culture. I don't think we're meant to be this busy. And I think it's, it takes a toll on me anyway, especially. Um, I almost despise busyness with every ounce of my being. So like I have a visceral reaction to how busy I can get sometimes and I hate it. And I feel that a big uh, chunk of time is spent silencing the world around you. And then you're finally in a place where you can receive and it's over when there's two, when it was, that's how I felt like it was. Does that make sense? What I'm saying? No, Have you ever like sat in adoration and like, if you do a holy hour, it's like 55 minutes of the holy hour is you fighting your distractions and then you finally get in the zone and the hour's over. Like, that's what I mean. Like, it's like, um, I think that it would be to me anyway, it made me yearn for something deeper, something longer, something more silent, something more intimate. <laughs> And, and, and because it, it just, to me, that's showing that's something that I need right now. You know, it's like that <clears throat> when you, when you dive deeper, it's something that you didn't realize that you needed until you were <clears throat> yearning for more once it was done. No, it makes sense. I mean, I, I guess it was shorter for us. So Friday, Friday night, we went down. And the Friday night, that's not a, I mean, yeah, there were parts of it. There was like an adoration and a praise and worship, but yeah. then it was like social social and up really late and then you had to get up early that's exhausting to me like i i know that fills your cup that drains me and i think it depends on the person i think that for some um a ton of socialization you need time to recuperate from that socialization for others that is what fills them and then they can go out into their their daily things i think it really depends on the person and their need no, I, I would agree. I just, I'm not getting much socialization during the day and you are all day. Yeah. So it's not necessarily the person per se, which it can be, but it's also your station of life. If what you're somebody who, who likes socialization, but you work from home. Yeah. It doesn't right. mean you're not necessarily an introvert or an extrovert. It just means that sometimes it's just your season of love for what's yeah, going on. That's true. But Cause I always I, thought of myself as an extrovert, but I think I'm one of those com weird combination introvert extroverts that like I... Well, you're I, just busy. You know, your job, <laughs> your job is busy and, and I, I get where you're coming from, but you know, once again, it's just our attitudes on how we approach the busy because of the fall, we have to be busy. That's part of what we have to do. We're, we're to toil and to work six days and get a seventh day. We actually mostly get two days off, which is nice. Mm, that's interesting. Well, mostly that's what we get, but the other things that we do in our lives, we shouldn't look at that as work. I mean, we separate work from work and things that we have to do for our children or for the church or for those other things. We can't lump that into the same category as work per se, but yours is kind of clouded because it's a lot 
of church and school are related. I get it. But I guess too, I, I get your point about the retreats because too much of retreats are discussion. Mm -hmm. And that's what this was about. This was, we were doing the rescue project. And if you guys don't know what the rescue project is, I'll share it in the link below. It's a, a nine part video series from Father John Ricardo and it's Acts very 29. Good. It's and very good. And it does burrow, it does dive dive deep. deep. But it goes to places that makes you you do need to unsurface. But what's what I'm saying? Like once that's unsurfaced, you want to process it. Yeah, but we've been doing this over weeks and then there's like mm -hmm. a retreat for these right. for these two. So it's two videos and then discussion. Mm -hmm. But I, I guess an ideal retreat for me would be like you said, like a silent retreat mm -hmm. where it's all prayer, all silence, all Let's think about that word retreat. What is a re what is to retreat? To re withdraw. Like right. usually Jesus all the time, anytime before he I think he models to us perfectly what that looked like and it was him leaving to go off and spend time with God alone. Yeah. And I think that a good a good solid retreat will allow you that silent time to do it. However, there were times in discussion where if I didn't have my small group of people to process the things that I was thinking about, I don't know if I would have processed it in the right way. So I think having times of discussion and times of, of singing and times of adoration, it's, what I'm saying is that once that was done, I wanted, I was, I felt like I, oh, it's over. I got to plug back into regular life. You know, I just, it made me yearn for something deeper longer and, more. and longer. longer. Mm hmm yeah, well, hopefully we can set that up for you this summer. <laughs> I want your cup to be to filled. I, I, I hope, I'm praying and hoping we can make that happen. I know they do. I know uh, Mundelein Seminary does like Ignatian seven day, you know, and well, if I could do a seven day silent retreat. There's got to be in the middle, but let's talk about retreats in general. So a retreat is a withdrawal. Yeah. I mean, what I'll, are we withdrawing from? Withdrawing from some kind of everyday thing. So Jesus had a very, intense ministry right healing people wherever he went preaching he was exhausted the chosen does a really good job of just you know um showing this in that a, a few episodes but especially the one where he healed people all day and how tired he was at the end and how mary ministers to him i that always stood out to me that that there's a there's a, a tired because everything that he gave everything right but he would then withdraw and there was many, there's many moments in, in the Bible where he is doing that. And sometimes he does it without even telling his apostles where he went or where he's going. It's just, he steps away to pray and he makes sure to make that a priority. So you can withdraw every day. I mean, there's a lot of different, really, you know, on there's apps and things like that that can call for small times in your day to withdraw and have a retreat. So just knowing that there needs to be time carved out to withdraw from the crazy busyness in order to really truly connect with God in a way that's going to help recalibrate. I feel recalibrated after like adoration and confession. And I think every good retreat has adoration and confession somewhere in it. Yeah, and we were blessed to have that. We had adoration on Friday night, praise and One worship. One of the best confessions I've had in a long time. I would say so myself too. And it actually, um, it spurred on those like going. It's like mm -hmm. he challenged me to to look deeper, mm -hmm. you know. And that's what a retreat is doing. Mm -hmm. And it was just capped by confession. And then we went into mass, which is an and it, and it was a smaller group, so it was an intimate mass. Mm -hmm. But it really started this journey that i've been on the the last two days of re this book that i'm reading and some talks that i was reading so then i was like retreating myself today yeah. for about three hours I, oh, that sounds amazing yeah i retreated and well where i went wasn't pretty i you know i was going to well that's what it, it, it was ugly too and and i think this experience but again i think it was a, it's a book that we're reading together that's almost like a little marriage retreat that we're having in you know, together with another couple or another several couples and where it talks in the book that when you get into this stuff, the, what does it talk about how, you, how, when you make bone broth, the scum rises to the top and you got to filter out the scum and throw it out. I feel like that 
needs to happen and it hurts and it's uncomfortable. And that was discussed at the, at this, at this event too, that God, I mean, think about this, this week's readings about you are the vine, you know, or I am the vine, you are the branches and how God prunes those that do stay within him, cuts off the others, but prunes those that are, you know, remaining with him. Pruning hurts. You're cutting away the, the, the ugly, right? In, in order for it to grow in order right. for it yeah. to grow and it grows right. yeah because it's not it's producing not gonna, fruit yeah so it's, it's going to so be it uncomfortable and it's going to be but at the same time it's so needed it's so desperately needed and i i went into this again in my busyness going oh another thing to do right but i left there feeling very very happy that i went but weren't wanting more that's yearning for more. That's understandable. It's it's like once you get to the mountaintop and you're there with Jesus and things, you're feeling the grace and you're feeling all those things. You want to stay there. Well, yeah, I I felt like I didn't get there. I needed more time. Yeah. That's what I'm trying to say. But yeah, that's true too. That's what we talked about too. Is that you 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 unearth all these things and you discover all these things. But let's get real. You go back to real regular everyday life and you don't remember half of the stuff that you unearthed. That's why it's always important to at least have one takeaway. Like it's important to journal and write things down so you have those to re- you can go back to in your daily prayer life or adoration time where you can bring yeah, it there to revisit. keep ex- keep examining it. But we did. You have notes and stuff you can you know really go back. And I think retreating is necessary. What would you say how how frequent should somebody in a practical way try to, I know we can go daily and and you should like, you know, whether that's on your lunch break to get up 15 minutes in your car to just say some prayers and to spend time with God and have a conversation with God, or if that's going for a walk and inviting God into that or mm-hmm. those different things. I mean, something where we actually either as a couple or by ourselves, how often would you think that we should disconnect and get away like once a year to get yeah. a good retru- I would say uh, at religious least, retreat, not think, like a vacation, but something no, where I the, think the at soul least, intent is doing this. I think at least once a year. Do you? I mean, it would be preferably probably twice a year would probably be, yeah. you know, depending on how busy you really are and how you can do it. Maybe once by yourself and once as a couple. That's a good idea. Are you trying? Are we like trying to like map this out just, well, I'm just with everybody? Th- I'm just listening. thinking aloud. I mean, yeah. we don't really have anything written down. We were no. just thinking about yeah. the topic, and it's on our mind because we got back. And like I said, I it really helped me. I wasn't finished yet either, so that's why I was, you know, luckily enough to have time today. But to I feel keep like it's all, like the things. the fruits from a good retreat should be never finished. I yeah. guess right, and that if you do continue to have that daily reflective time with God, you're letting those fruits go. Well, let's get real. Sometimes you get back into your habits, back into your routines and just making sure that, yeah, that you at least do it, at least do it annually. Well, I mean, look in the Bible. We're, we're talking about Jesus. We're talking about Moses. We're talking about Elijah, people that modeled it. And every time was for, they were doing 40 dayers, you know. Well, nobody, well, nobody can do that anymore in this day and age. Well, it's, it, it's, it's, it's tough, you know, but that's where serious spiritual you know, change can happen when we go with these longer things. So yeah, if you can't do 40 days, obviously like a, a long weekend, 40 hours, <laughs> you know, 40 hours. Yeah. I mean, but it, uh, something is better than nothing. I mean, what the world is starving from is silence. That's it. That Starving and for, si- I start, uh, so I meant starving for silence because everything there was a lot so of, I did appreciate that. There was a lot there of, there was silence. a lot of silence and silence does make you uncomfortable. It does. But there was a good amount of silence. A balance of music and it and was, silence. I think that was very good, very in- intentional, and I really in- appreciated it, even though the first couple times it was like, uncomfortable. Yeah, you're like, and I think, too, a lot of it, it makes it a lot easier in the silence when we step outside into nature. Mm-hmm. I think I found myself like looking out into the woods or looking out at a body of a little stream that they had, this little, Mm -hmm. little Creek they had. I think that's also the the trick is that we're also, especially we live in the suburbs and you know, there's not a lot of, you know, stars and 
Yeah. It's not a lot of like landscape. We That's live, what I said. Go, we I live in the Midwest. In, it's pretty flat. I would like to go to one in Arizona, <laughs> be yeah. up in the mountains. You know, and, and God willing that this summer we're going to try to get away to some national parks and, and do our own kind of, you know, a family like retreat. That would be nice. Mm -hmm. But also a way to unplug, you know, from technology, letting go of all the things that grasp for your attention every five seconds. That's also a beautiful thing. Yeah, for Literally me, unplugging. I mean, we still had our phones with us, but we were asked several times to not look at them, you know, even on breaks. Like, And then I, I looked best. at mine like way late on Saturday. And I'm like, why did I just look at that phone? Yeah. I get some bad. Got some bad news. <laughs> some bad member. news. Yeah. I'm like, oh, no. I just kind of mm. put a damper on the end. But it also it gave me something to pray for. Though. Gave me something, to, someone to pray for. And it gave me mm -hmm. something to, to think about. And. You know, things that I need to do different to reach out to certain people in our lives. You know, if you go on a retreat and you don't come back with something like a good takeaway, mm -hmm. then something wasn't right. Mm -hmm. You know, so much of we make so many decisions in our daily lives without asking God, what should I do this or not? Mm -hmm. Like all throughout scriptures, I'm doing the Bible in a year again. It's like anytime anyone's doing anything, it's like if they don't ask God, should I do this? Like they get into trouble and like they're they're using their own wisdom and their own judgment and it usually ends up bad. Yeah. But every time David before he did something is like, God, should I do this? Like, yeah, go do it. He's like, all right, boom. That they win a, a rousing <laughs> battle. If he doesn't, it's like, oh no. You know, and, and in so much mm -hmm. of our lives, we don't take time to have a conversation with God and ask him. And I was just listening to a talk and the guy was talking about this. And he was like, yeah, but you can't ask God like crazy questions. Like, oh, should I go do a new, like you got to start simple having these conversations. Like, should I do this or should I not do this? And sit and pray about it and, and wait for God. I mean, a voice isn't going to come down from the clouds, but he's going to speak like Elijah. When Elijah went away to Mount Horeb, he spent that time. God came to him in that small, still voice. Mm -hmm. and that's how God talks to us today. But we have and to again, be in silence. Think about how long it takes for us to get there, depending on how yeah. overly stimulated we are with our things in life. Again, like I said, it took me almost the whole day for my brain to finally filter out all the jar junk that was trying to get my attention. And then I finally was focused and it was almost over. You know what I mean? So it was like, same thing with, like I said, in adoration, you sit there and you have all this, all this swirls of things going on in your mind. You got to find a way to let those things start to clear out before you could really start to hear his voice. So you have to have these, these moments where it's more than just an hour or two, where it is days long of a disconnect, a literal detachment from all the things that vie for your attention other than God. And this particular, you know, um, retreat was asking us to think about all these idols, the things that do distract us, you know, you, you start to think and you start to go down. And is that is where it is good to have moments of discussion with others because you start to see different perspectives and start to think, oh, yeah, you know, me too. And in, in, in these areas that I need to work on that I never thought of, you know, but it doesn't happen right away. And for me, like embarrassed to say, it took me like eight hours before my brain stopped. I wouldn't say embarrassed. It's just you have a lot on your plate, and you know, between being a mom and the school and the kids, and you know, when All we're away, tabs open. <laughs> and, yeah, when we're away from our kids, you're worrying about them and making sure everything's okay, and mm -hmm. which it's it's normal. Yeah, but if we don't take time to do these things, then we'll, gonna... ne we'll never do it. You, you can't be so hard on yourself either. You know, the if it's it's not the voice of God that's condemning you in that. And that's the evil one who wants to make it seem like, oh, it's not fruitful. You're too busy. You can't even concentrate and you can't even pray. It's like, mm -hmm. no, one minute's enough if you spend time with God. Mm -hmm. You know, it, but it depends on how you go into it. <laughs> There's this uh, book by, um, oh my gosh, what's his name? The Bible Geek. What's his name? Mark Hart. Mark Hart. And it's about adoration. It's so good. He talks about um, at being in adoration for that holy hour. And he said the saints are up there going, oh, my man, Mark, he did four minutes this time. <laughs> like out of his 56 was really distracted, but he gave 
he gave got four whole minutes. Like how, you know, instead of saying, Oh, I could only pay attention for four minutes. It's like, no, I, you know, I was able to, for four, you know, and so it's just, again, the shift of perspective and what God is really wanting is, is your heart and not to beat yourself up over that. And that the evil one's going to be the one that's accusing and trying to make you feel bad about it and be the negativity that, that speaks into the moment. And I think that God encourages God's voice, you know, comforts and encourages and helps you to respond positively. If you have these negative thoughts, they're not, they might be some things sometimes when God convinc convicts you of like negative things you're doing, but not, not in that way. You got to watch Not to it. condemn you. Because after you're done. he may point it out. Like, hey, dude, right. like this probably you shouldn't do this. Like Not that you're you. bad or. Yeah. Um, you know, and so you just really, again, you know, <laughs> it's like you leave a, you leave a retreat with the Aliyah Garza. We've had her on the show before where she calls it a Jesus high. And so it's just like, what, what are you going to do when your Jesus high wears off? Right. And like finding your one takeaway, but also know that when you leave a retreat, your prime, like, you know, meat for the devil for a spiritual attack. And so being ready for that and being uh, able to be cognizant of what, what is of God and what's, what's not, and, and, and trying to not let that get to you right after. Yeah. And I think we beat ourselves up, but I, I think that's a good point though, about the daily retreat where, you know, treat your prayer time like a mini retreat, mm -hmm. you know, and for me, and that means put, put your it, phone away, away from you. But it's hard because there's so many good things on it. Like there's so many apps right now. Um, like the Halo app is really good. And that's, what's so difficult is that there are so many things on it, but I tell you, I feel like there's so many distractions. There's too. just too many. There's just if too I'm many. going to read, I literally have to move my phone Yeah, because I'm tempted to read half of a chapter or, when I get to a break. Have you and ever mindlessly at, like, okay, I'm picking up my phone to start prayer, like on a Halo app or something that I'm using, some app that I'm using. And I literally swipe up and without like, it, it's like a uh, autopilot. I just go straight into Instagram and I'm scrolling and I'm like about two minutes in and I'm like, this isn't what, what? Wait, what was I supposed to be doing? What was I doing? It's kind of like when you walk into the basement and you're like, why am I down here? Like, and then you go back upstairs. And, and, and I go, oh, back, oh, that's oh yeah, that. Yeah. It's like, oh my gosh, like this is ridiculous. So yeah, I mean, but, identify but the things could, that. But disconnecting, maybe find a retreat time where it's not even, unplugged. where it's not on your phone. Yeah. Like reading scripture or just being quiet or. or, or on a book, on not a book. in an app. <laughs> yeah, because, but you have to almost move your phone yeah. because that temptation to look at, to yeah. check at it because it beeps, it rings, it, mm -hmm. you know, if you got it on your phone, then your watch is going. Yeah, I don't have a watch well. <laughs> on purpose. I don't need any more things vying for my attention on purpose. But it. The fruit that comes from silence, I think, is one thing I wanted to leave everybody with is that uh, Soren Kierkegaard, he says that if everybody spent time in silence, we'd solve all the problems of the world. That mm. That's what the world is so longing for right now is the solitude, the, the silence. It says in, in Psalm 40, I believe it's be still and know that I am God. So the, the first part is obviously be still. You have to sit still. Mm -hmm. And reading is one of those things where you have to sit still. You can't be looking at a phone and reading a book. You have to keep going back, rereading the paragraphs. Yeah. And that's why a lot of people don't read because you have to sit still and you have to be quiet. Like you can watch a movie and scroll and do five things at once, or you can listen to a podcast and drive your car or watch, yeah. listen to this and do other right. things. But when you're reading a book, you have to just read the book. Yeah, but I've done that too, where I'm reading the book and I'm like, thinking about other things and, and then you have to go back and reread re re it re like a paragraph. podcast you just keep going if That's you're watching true. a video you just keep going yeah. you know but when i really got into reading it was partly because i really wanted to be still needed to and quiet i needed to learn how to mind. sit still because mm -hmm. i'm such a busy body in my busy mind, but we have to train ourselves. Mm -hmm. And that's what a retreat is doing. Mm -hmm. It's literally forcing you to do these things mm -hmm. because it, it feels uncomfortable at first. The yeah. silence at first feels uncomfortable. And isn't this terrible? I just want to like, sometimes it'll say, well, oh, not going to be able to get a hold of me. I'm going on a silent retreat. <laughs> like It's kind of like, 
leave me alone. <laughs> Without saying leave me alone. But in a way, you know what I mean? Like where there is every, you know, you know, like you're making it a point. You're taking an action. You're going somewhere different. You're disconnecting. And that's part of the process versus if you're at your house people are like, why aren't you answering? Where are you? It's, it's just, you know, you don't have anything going on. You know what I mean? Well, I'm just trying to stay away off my phone. No, this is like a purpose intentionality behind yeah. it where you are physically like making it known and you're physically doing something with that intentionality. So I think that, well, I think, I think it, I think, even though it will be difficult, I've never been on a silent retreat. Have you ever done anything like that? We went, uh, we did a retreat when I was in the lay leadership program. But was it silent? It was pretty silent for like the first day. Okay. Yeah. Tough for me. I'm a talker. Mm -hmm. But I think our Jewish brothers and sisters have it together. They do Shabbat and they do, you know, it's the Sabbath. They do no technology, no working, and they're oh praying gosh, and they're spending Brandon. time. They're spending time with. What was it that I was asking him to do yesterday? Uh, put the dishes in the dishwasher, maybe, or I don't know, something. He's seven. And then I asked him to wipe down something, and he's like, Mom, I know my commandments, and this is work. And it's the Sabbath. I'm like, Oh my gosh. Yeah, but we still need to clean up our dishes from the dinner on the yeah, but Sabbath. I, but Thank I, you. But, but I, I like think he's that his, on, like, he's on, he's on, he's on, something. Like, he's on we do, like, I, I, I shouldn't be doing this, but I do like a and load we, of laundry or two, right? And we on try, that though. We, we've been, we did an episode on the Sabbath. You can go back and, yeah, uh, and check that out. But it's I, hard. But I think, but we've been doing a lot better job of trying to limit stuff we're doing on Sunday, yeah. try to get our chores around the it house, just the laundry. It crams a lot of things on Saturday, it, but it does, you have a but retreat that, all day on Saturday. Then, Guess what? You're doing things on Sunday. Yeah, but <laughs> like going forward, like, right. you know, we, we go to mass and we have like a lunch mm -hmm. and then we get to enjoy each other. And then usually we have like a bigger dinner, like a roast or, you know, invite someone, your mom over or something, yeah. but trying to stay away from cutting the grass or doing laundry or doing errands and sneaking in those chores that do make your week a little bit easier. But at the end of the day, robs you of a piece that you need from at least doing limited amounts of things on that one day that gives you that rest and that solitude. And I, and I think that again, big retreats, big intentionality retreats where you let everybody know where you're going and what you're doing and that leave me alone, like going off and silent retreats. That's great. And that is something that we should try to do annually at least. But I think that we also have these opportunities daily and weekly to do just what a retreat is yeah. meant to do, which is meant to withdraw, unplug, restore, allow God to restore restore us. I think this is St. Therese. She says, oh no, sorry. It's, this is St. Ignatius of Loyola who says, take Lord and receive all my liberty, my memory, my understanding, my entire will, and all I have and call my own. You have given it all to me. To you, Lord, I return it. Everything is yours and do with it what you will. Give me only your love and your grace, and that is enough for me. It's it is a surrender, it is a withdrawal, but it's also it's also a well. What if if someone retreats in war? They have essentially give. It's not a surrender, is it? A surrender if you retreat if you're if your army not retreats. No retreat. You're 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 retreating. You're going the away. other surrender way. Surrender means you give up and they they take you. They retreat take you. Means that you're falling back. To you're regroup, falling you're back falling back to, to regroup. regroup. Yes. And St. Ignatius was a soldier. Right. So that's, you know, he got injured. He got hit with a cannonball. But so that's in his, a retreat, you can surrender. You're essentially not fighting, right? You're you're regrouping to be healed. What yeah, happens over what happens when you're to the so if you're if you're a, yeah, it's not right. You're 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 surrendering to the, you're surrendering to the right side, right? But at the same time, think about what would happen in, in a retreat in that sense on the battlefield. You take care of all the wounds. You you restore your energy. You restore your maybe maybe your soldiers haven't eaten. Maybe they need mending of their uniforms, mending of their wounds. Maybe they need rest. Maybe they need to actually sleep. Like think of all these things, this restoration that happens during that retreat, that that time. So you can't find out what you need unless you process 
what's going on around you. You take a step back and you allow God to point out the areas that you may need restoration and healing and some stitch ups, right? And some nourishment that you might in your busyness not notice at all that you needed. Yeah, there's and I think so much of it we, we miss. We miss so much. And so it's so important for you to take a an inventory of these things on a daily basis, on a monthly basis, but then Man, annually yes. hardcore do that yeah. to see where where God show me the places in my life that I need to be restored healed what are old practices i've forgotten about that used to bring me closer to you what are new things you want to bring into my life what is something that i you know completely am blind to and show it to me and help me work through that and you know one of the uh, people in my group was talking about she had an encounter with God all these years ago and all she's done ever since is chase that, chase that high. Cause I get just chase that Jesus high, right? Like th that, that was the only way she could encounter God, you know? And he just burst through that at this retreat, right. And, and spoke to her in a different way. And I think that we do sometimes have these big moments of encounter with God and then we chase them and think sometimes when we go into a yeah. retreat, oh, I'm, oh, good, there's adoration because I know what happens in adoration. He does this and I feel this and then I do, you know, like we get these expectations too. Yeah. And that needs to be well, I something. Think, but I think that's, we, that's a good analogy that you're saying. Like on a retreat, we're stepping back right. versus chasing. You're going towards God. Yeah. And when we chase him, we're not going to get him you, because God right. isn't. Uh, a retreat means like, I need to step off and I need him. I need the, I need the physician to tell me what I need. But, well, but it could be a physician. It, it could be my, my, my general, right. It could be, it's not about me and what I'm yeah, But most chasing. of, most of it is a, we need a, we need his heart. We need new hearts. Most of it all has to do with our hearts. Mm -hmm. You know, we're a piece of our heart. God has, if we don't let him fill it back, you know, we have to keep doing that. Yeah, because of the hurts of the world and mm -hmm. our disappointments and, you know, our past traumas and all these different things. That's what mm -hmm. a retreat for me was, was trying to be restored, to be rescued again, because you can have those mountaintop experiences, but you have to keep having them. Mm -hmm. But if we're going into it, just like if we go into mass and we're going into it for the feeling that I'm going to get from God or this super high mm -hmm. about this feeling, right. feeling the feelings is that, you know, sometimes, you know, they said in the... In, and the retreat is like, try hard less. Try less no, hard. No, try less hard. Try I like less that. hard. Like, it's like, we got to stop trying. Let go. A guy that was in our, in our group, he he wasn't looking, he didn't like, anticipate this God moment where he was in Rome and the, the Pope started giving his address and just the, he started talking. All of a sudden, he just like was overwhelmed with emotion. But it wasn't like he went into it like, I, I want to feel this. It was like, no, it was like, we had to kind of just mm -hmm. let your guard down. Don't expect God's going to work in his weird ways. Let go of your it, expectations when yeah. you let go of you expect to let go of everything, including your own but, expectations. But don't chase the feeling, yeah. chase God himself. Yeah. Because oh, a I lot, like because the, a lot of times we're chasing feelings, whether that's mm -hmm. in our marriage. Like I don't feel the same way when we first got married. Mm -hmm. Therefore our marriage is on the rocks or we're chasing you know, at mass. Well, I'm not getting anything out of it because the homily was junk and the music I was distracted. Distracted. Well, those are some of the best masses because you're going not for what you're getting out of it, but you're there for God. Well, that was one of the things I wrote down in my notes from Father Ricardo's, I think it was the second video. I don't know, one of them, where he said, love, the love starts when the feeling st stops, or the true love is when the feelings stop. And because the feelings are fleeting. Feelings are fleeting, but like, when you truly make the choice to love is when you don't feel it. And I thought that was really powerful because it's so the opposite what our culture tells us. Our but, culture but, says that once you stop feeling the feeling, well, it's time to end the relationship. <laughs> well, I think I, I love that the term for the Holy Spirit is the wild goose. 
Because oh, yeah. God, have you ever watched those? Yeah, with Father Pavanka. Mm -hmm. Because God is wild. He's untamed. And the yeah. more you try to put him in that box of, yeah. if I do this, then God does that. Mm -hmm. you're setting if I show yourself up to up this for, retreat, I'm going to leave yeah. this way. You, and these you are my have to just keep showing up. You have to yeah. keep putting in the, the reps. Right. And he'll surprise you. Mm -hmm. But he's never going to come in if you don't invite him. Yeah. He's never going to come if you don't surrender and let down your guard. You know, you have to say, God, I'm giving you my heart. You got to keep doing that over mm -hmm. and over again. And maybe you're not going to feel it, but doesn't mean he's not there doing something. So doesn't mean the sacraments aren't still doing things. Right. Just because you don't feel it. You know, it's like you go to the gym and you work out, you work out and it, you feel sore, but you're not really seeing it. It's like over time, mm -hmm. then you're like, oh, after three months, like, oh, I'm down three inches or I gained muscle or mm -hmm. I did this. It's like, if you just keep looking in the mirror, like, I don't see anything. Mm -hmm. I look, next day I'm in the mirror, like, I don't see anything. I like, I look the I same. Just, I just yeah, you easily get, Is it better now? Yeah, you easily get discouraged. And a lot of that is like our spiritual life is that we don't notice a lot of the changes, but the people around us will. They came back from retreat, like, why do you look so different? You're smiling or these different things. We may not feel it, but we start to get feel the effects. And it might not happen within, you know, the time frame that you want. It could be a practice that you take on and a fruit from something, a small fruit, a small thing. And then over the course of time, over years could develop into something exactly. different. So let's, let's talk practical. I can't, I, I don't have time or money to go on some fancy retreat far away. What are ways that we could replicate a retreat in our own home? Even, even let's say we have a family retreat with our kids. What you are things that a, we could a, a, do? You go to like a, you know, like so a close, leave the house, leave the house, go to a, leave these in the car, leave those in the car, go, go out for a to hike. The, go for a, a hike or fly a kite or, <laughs> or do something like that. But I, I think, go uh, uh, get a pedicure with your daughter. <laughs> like yeah, you're just naming yeah. all the things we did yesterday. But, but I, but I think we don't have to go far to go on a retreat. Like in your diocese, they have retreat centers usually, mm -hmm. and your diocese runs retreats, mm -hmm. or your church sometimes does them. A lot of times you don't have to go too fancy. You just have to put yourself in. in but usually your diocese will run a couple a year, mm -hmm. and they usually have some for couples. They usually have mm -hmm. one for each other. Right. So look look into your parish website or their social media. That's but, an easier way because it's close and it's local. You don't got to travel far. And they're new, not a lot of money. They're usually $25, $30 or something, and then food or whatever. Yeah. But that's but a good honestly, way. like. But you can do your you own. You can do your own. You can do your own daily by doing, you know, a reflection, silent time and prayer time. You can go, like you said, for a walk, you know, carving out just time to be silent and just connect spending with time, God. Yeah, just, just think about what it is and have intentionality behind doing that. How about that? So what is a retreat? A, withtreat, a retreat is a withdrawal, a withdrawal to be able to be healed, revived, rejuvenated, um, nourished, all these different things that happen. Or just time to spend with God. Well, Even if none of those things happen. What I'm saying with if, if you if you leave with that intentionality and you yeah. ask God whatever you want to do to me, do it. It's 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 I'm retreating. I'm withdrawing. I'm I'm completely taking myself, unplugging, even for these five minutes. And I'm just going to ask you to pour any graces into me that'll help me be who you're calling me to be. So restore me, Lord, rejuvenate me, Lord, take away my ugly, get the scum out. You know, anything that, anything that is going to help with a replenishment yeah. of yourself. And I think we could turn any moment into a mini retreat by just simply asking God to be with us in the moment mm -hmm. and just having a conversation with God. So much mm -hmm. of us, we have to do the rosary. We got to read scripture. We got to yeah. do those things. Again, like, that's so Catholic of us. The busyness. That's, I know that's the Catholic. In yeah. Us. We need to we need to do those practices, yes. But just we also sitting in silence with we also nothing. need to just sit there with no expectations, no mm -hmm. prayers, yes. and just say, God be with me in this moment. You want to tell me something? Tell me something. If not, I'm just want to be here I'm just with you. Sit here. I just want to sit time, I just want to spend time with you. Right. And then shut up and don't say that's anything. so hard because your mind starts to race. And you think all of a sudden then you don't, then you gotta say some prayers and well, you know, no, not just that. Be like, Oh yeah, I'm just gonna oh, yeah, no, yeah. I, my brain will go, Oh, I'm just sitting here being quiet being quiet for you. I'm quiet. Notice how quiet I am. Just trying to be quiet over here. I'm like, oh my gosh, just stop thinking. <laughs> no, it's hard. So it is, it is. That's why I'm saying it takes me about eight hours and then I'm ready and then it's time to go home. So know, know that you can make any 
Well, it takes anything, practice. It and takes you can practice. make anything a retreat if you're silent and you just let him do all the work, yeah. which is easy, or easier said than done. But it but takes also practice. Seeking and don't, di- out, don't get discouraged. Yeah. Seeking out what and knowing things about yourself of what fills you, too. You know, if if having time in nature or away something. is nature, you know, that nature does it. Or if, you know, going to adoration chapel may help or going into an adoration or, chapel or going for a walk. I was going to say, it's or physical. discussion with good friends. Maybe that is with something that does fill you. Maybe you are someone that's kind of works from home or works alone all needs day or is, needs to connect because that is what fills you. Knowing that, that that's your way of being restored and, and re- rejuvenated and uh, healed and all these things, then then seek that. Yeah. And so, that so we got some daily, some moment to moment stuff. We got some daily things. Mm-hmm. Sundays, try to make it carve out some time yeah. on Sundays. Make I mean, maybe Sundays you, be maybe you, and maybe you can't do it all day, but maybe you can squeeze a couple hours to just mm-hmm. turn the TV off, go outside, go for a walk, spend some time. Thinking some about time. what really distracts and, Cut Look at the, those idols that we started with our retreat. It was trying to, what are those things mm-hmm. that get in front of God? There's nothing more powerful at a retreat than adoration <laughs> and confession, no matter what. No matter what retreat I'm at, it better, there better be adoration and confession or else it's, to me, not well, Jesus is as there. In, impactful to me. You know, and, that's and, just me. And that's the Father Mike quote is that in confession, Jesus wants to heal you. And in adoration, Jesus wants to hold you. And what is, and that's what I and that's expect what the from retreat a retreat is, is you want to be want healed to, and you want to be helped. You want to be, yeah. you want to be connected. And Again, you want if to be you look at it for what God. that that word retreat is on a battlefield, what would a what would an army do in a retreat? Think of all those things, and that's what you want to ask God to do for you. No matter if you go for five minutes, eight hours, four days, Amen. whatever, forty days. If anybody can do that, wishful thinking. Well, mm-hmm. I think we exhausted. Retreats. <laughs> I'm ready for a retreat uh, now. I know, right? Well, All right. Well, hopefully you guys got something from that. If you could be so inclined, we really would appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button, share it, um, tell your friends that the Catholic couple is cool. Yeah. Oh my gosh! You you want to listen to us? Oh, you're so lame. <laughs> I know. Okay. All right. End well, in prayer. End in prayer. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. God bless you and have a beautiful day.